Hey everyone, I'm going to be doing a video on, um, about CPAC, sorry, uh, about CPAC, which is to do with uh, practical uh, or competencies in practical assessments in science, okay? Um, so, you know, it has been a lot of confusion. I don't think people were very sure about how they get them um, or they pass their CPAC. So I'm going to tell you like the things that we are expecting you to do in order to pass the CPACs. And this is to the latest news that um, at least I received. If something changes, obviously I'll change the video as well, um, at least as soon as I can, okay? so. At the moment, CPACs, normally what I do is if you really want to pass your CPACs, um, you know, don't be lazy and don't just focus on that particular CPAC. You know, why don't you do uh, a full practical investigation? You are capable of doing that. You are an A-level student now, and this is going to save you um, worries later on in the year if you are not being able to meet the CPAC in one place. But you got it elsewhere okay at least again according to what aqa is saying at the moment on the present day on their website so if you want to guarantee that you pass your cpacs in every single practical do the following get a page or get a place only for background information get a page or a place only for the list of equipment a page for the variables a page for the risk assessment a page for the method page for table of results, page for graph, play, page for conclusion and evaluation, okay? And if you do this, then you have enough space to get everything that you need to pass, to pass all the CPACs, okay? So, in the background information, you should include cited and dated sources. This is about what you know, the background um, about your practical, what you know about it. Are you talking about gas laws? So, how do they work? Which gas laws were... Um, exist what do they say that is uh, constant is it a ratio is it a multiplication of different things pressure volume temperature what needs to be constant there so give a background information how does your graph should look like or how is the um, you know outline of the graph you are expecting in your results list of equipment not just you know saying yeah i'll use a stop clock and that's all no actually take it seriously what are you going to use and why are you going to use that equipment so we you really need to say why at least you know, uh, I don't want to be putting anyone in a bad position, but uh, before we weren't quite told that would the why was that important to have it written, but now I want you to have it written. So why are you using that equipment? Make it clear. All the evidence needs to be in a book. It's not enough just the teacher saying, yeah, they did it because I saw it. I want all the evidence in the books, okay? Variables. What are your independent, dependent and control variables? And not just that. Why are the control variables, control variables? How are you going to keep them the same? Why do you need to keep them the same? What is the consequence if you do not keep them the same? Risk assessment. Again, take it seriously. What are the risks in your practicals? And not just what are the risks, how are you going to minimize them? Normally, I ask people to make a table. Risk, what is the risk? Second column, why is it a risk? Third column, how can I we avoid it? So that's what I would do. Um, a table, what is the risk? Why is it a risk? How to avoid it? So again, take it seriously, guys. Method, and I said this over and over again. The method needs to be so clear that your grandmother, without knowing anything about physics, can go in and do the experiment. Okay, so it needs to be so clear that someone that never ever picked in any of these things could do the exact experiment as you're doing. So in a method, make it in step by step, make it very, very clear, give it in a lot of detail, including how you will take the measurements, okay? It, again, you, you, it doesn't hurt to say which variables you're controlling and how, ensuring that certain t temperature is the same throughout the experiment, for example. Table of results, you need to be careful, common mistakes, no uh, paying attention to significant figures or not paying attention to the units. You need to respect the units and the significant figures for all the parts in the table, not just that you did in one column, okay? The graph, the graph needs to have labels, must have units, must have the gradient and must have calculations about the gradient, okay? You can even do calculations about uncertainty on the graph in there, okay? And finally, conclusion and evaluation. 
overall how did the practical go um did you get the expected results uh why do you believe so uh includes errors or uncertainties where did they come from was it a systematic random were there any anomalies what could you have done better how are the possible improvements for that experiment did you have the equipment that you needed or was it something that it had to do with something you didn't control as well so talk about all these things and again i mean this is my experience some students don't take it seriously enough and then um at the end they are really struggling to pass all the CPACs. get used to do this with every single practical and you will be fine you don't have to worry about it later on Overall, this is more or less where the CPACs are met. And you can see there are 1B. I kept the 1B because according to AQA, it's still on their website, but uh, apparently they took it out. But anyway, the 1B is there. But if you do background uh, information, equipment, blah, 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 all of these, these are the CPACs that will be visible in, in that particular part. So when you're doing it, when you're writing your background information or your risk assessment, check, are you doing this? Is there anything that you should note? In my experiment, I, you know, I spilled some acid. This is what I did. You, okay. So again, it's about providing evidence. So someone from outside can go and see that you actually passed your CPACs. Okay. They will not just say, yeah, the teacher said so, and that's fine. All right. Now, these are, again, this is taken from the AQA. They still have 1B showing in there. This is what they say the CPACs are. Obviously, this is the full table, but because I understand that maybe if you're seeing this video on a mobile phone or if you are in a classroom and you're far away, you won't be able to read it all. So here we go in more detail. 1A, follow the written instructions to carry out the experiment techniques or procedures you may be given a method or you may be asked to research for a method and use that method to follow the written instructions in that method so you can have the method written in a book something you researched and then have that and follow it the having this the book closed as you're doing the experiment may not give you the cpac because you need to have the written instructions inside. Obtain expected results. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there because apparently that is gone now, but uh, this could be seen easily in the table. And if it didn't work out for some reason, because as we know, sometimes it doesn't work out, then you can explain it, okay? CPAC 2 is about planning, okay? So A, correct, uh, correctly uses appropriate instrumentation, apparatus and materials, including ICT, data loggers, computers, anything, to carry out the investigative activities, experimental techniques and procedures with minimal assistance or prompting. We should not be telling you how you do the experiment. You should not be saying you haven't explained to me. No, you need to research how you do the experiment. It may be that you are not familiar with data logger and all that stuff. That would be some minimal assistance, but I should not have to tell you how you do it. Again, when you're talking about the apparatus, why are you using that apparatus? Um, what is the, uh, the, the, the reason why you're picking it up? How is it going to help you in your investigation? Does it have the right resolution for it? Uh, do you need it because you really need to, I don't know, measure mass or measure force? So say all these things. To be carry out techniques or procedures methodically in sequence and in combination uh, identifying practical issues and making adjustments when necessary you may have um forgot the name now but it's a pre-practical a prelim you may have a prelim and then you suddenly think you know what my range is not good enough or the intervals i need to make it, them smaller so there we go to be however you need to write it in the book okay uh, to see identifies and controls significant quantitative variables where applicable and plans approaches to make to take account of variables that cannot be readily uh, controlled again it's not enough just to say what they are now you need to say why they are them and how you're going to control them and make it clear don't just tell your teacher have it in your book uh, to these selects appropriate equipment uh, and measure strategies in order to ensure suitable uh, and accurate results. Again, this is about you explaining why you pick that equipment. Why would we give you a trolley? Why would I give you a meter ruler? Is that a meter ruler better than a letter logger? And if not, why are you then using a meter ruler? Explain everything. CPAC C is uh, three is about safety. 
So, 3A, identify hazards and assess the risks associated with these hazards, making safety adjustments as necessary when carrying out the experiment techniques and procedures in the lab or field. Again, not only have that table, also, if something happens in the experiment, write it down in the book, have physical evidence, okay? Uses appropriate safety equipment and approaches to minimize risks with minimal prompting. Again, this should be something that we could just see and see it happening. However, if there is something in your experiment, you talk about it. I had to put a clamp because, you know, as I was adding weights to my spring, the spring, um, the whole apparatus, like the spring and the stand were falling. This could have been something you thought about it before or you didn't and then you decided to put a clamp in there, okay? A G clamp, for example. Four, makes and records observations. So this is about collecting results. For A, it's about making the accurate observations relevant to the experiment or invest uh, investigative procedure. How are you going to, imagine that you're measuring volume. Um, so how are you going to do it? Are you going to look in the same line of sight of, as where the surface of the liquid is? Or are you going to do it at an angle? For example, stuff like that. Obtains, uh, for B, obtains accurate, precise and sufficient data for experimental and investigative procedures and records this methodically in a table using appropriate units and conventions. Again, units, significant number of figures, you need to stick to it, okay? Number five, uses appropriate software and or tools to process data, process data, carry out research, calculations and reports findings. Again, this is all about how you explain everything in a conclusion and evaluation. Sometimes the software could be a simple calculator, okay? And 5B, cited sources of information demonstrating that his research has taken place, supporting planning and conclusions. And again, you need to date it. If it's a book, what is the book? Who is the author? What were the pages? What chapter? If it's a web page, when did you access that web page? Okay? And that is it, really. Yeah, it is. So I hope it makes more sense now on how you can guarantee to um, get all your C packs ready. And um, yeah, I could only do this video now, really. And up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.